I'm in a groove state of mind. I do it all the time. No excuses and no blame. Stepping up my game. I'm a groove state, yes I am. You do I know I can. Read my master plan. I'm grooving, yes I am. I'm grooving. Oh, I'm grooving. I'm grooving, yes I am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Q&A live number 2020. Uh, my name is David Lemon. I am the product experience manager of Groove, and I'm going to be telling you today about what's happening inside Groove, what's happening with the products that you're uh, using, that you're waiting for, that you're loving all. So uh, that's basically my job to do here. Also, we're going to answer your questions. There's a lot of questions happening um, inside the Facebook community. There's a lot of questions sent to our support team. And uh, in certain cases, people just prefer to get the answers live right here, right now. So this is why we are doing these Q&A lives. I cannot answer all of the tech support questions. I give my best, but most of the times I'm here to answer uh, questions about strategy, about I'm stuck with something, how to do this, can it can this be done, and things like that. So if you need some kind of suggestion or you're stuck somewhere, you don't know how to move onwards, I'm going to be helping you here. Um, yeah, so before we start with everything, I decided a couple of sessions ago that we are going to do... Um, kind of a detailed update on everything that is happening happening currently with the development of the software called Groove. So I'm going to jump in. I created a couple of slides where I kind of put out all on the, on the slides what's being worked on so that you can stay in the loop and, um, and be familiar with all of our things that, are, that we are developing and working on and releasing. Um, yeah, I can see uh, quite a lot of people are are already here. The Shockley crew saying, "Hey, David, hope you have uh, you hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you very much, you as well." Um, there's another person, Habe Shotu, if I pronounce it incorrectly, I apologize. Hey to you as well. Uh, Angelo is here. Wonderful, groovy day, everyone. There's a Facebook user here saying, hi, David. Uh, if this is you, I do not know your name, so I would appreciate if you head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. If you go on to this address, um, this is for StreamYard, the platform that I'm using to stream on multiple platforms. Uh, you will approve access to it, and then when you comment next time, I'm going to see your name. Uh, like, for example, Kevin Strite. Here, here he did already uh, that step with streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And now I can see his beautiful profile image and his name and the last name. That's all. So head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. There's also links somewhere around here, depending on what device you're watching. If you're watching on Facebook, I'm going to be able to see your name. 
All right, let's move on. Who we have here? Danny, Daniel is here. Uh, good to have you here. Sebast Sebastian is here. Ismail is here. Amanda is here. Scott is here. All right, perfect. We have a great bunch of people watching. I see already some of the questions popped into my uh, to the comment section. I'm going to answer them. Uh, but first, let's do some sneak peek time with uh, what's happening in Groove. All right, so I'm going to actually show it like this and do it the kind of a slideshow. So today, just like we started now in an hour and a half, we will have a very, very interesting webinar with a lady called Christine Closer. And she is going to come on a webinar for everybody in Groove. This is a free, uh, free webinar. She will be teaching us how to write a book to grow your business. If you are or were or will be having some kind of a book promotion or or planning to write a book or planning planning to promote a book this may be the training that you need so this is uh today at 1 30 p.m eastern standard time if we don't we are not super specific it's approximately one and a half hour from now if you're watching this live stream um so i invite you all to join if you head over to our facebook community if you just go to the main page of our Facebook group. You'll be able to see there's a pinned post over here. And once you click on it, you'll see what's what's uh, what's the topic and what's it's going to what it's going to be uh, talked about. So the four critical questions every author needs to ask before writing a single world, a word, uh, the 250 most important words you'll ever write for your book, how to turn casual readers into raving fans, three simple strategies to grow your business as an author, how to avoid the common pitfalls most authors make. So this is mainly for authors. If you're kind of an affiliate for a book, you may not find this useful only in case you plan to write a book in the future. So uh, definitely check it out. There's a link to register if you haven't yet. This is our Groove Digital Presents regular webinar schedule, so you don't need to register if you already have registered once. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let me just hide that. There we go. Should be better now. All right, yeah, so that's basically my first slide. I'm inviting all to this webinar about writing books. Let's move on. Um, we had some dashboard UI changes. Dashboard UI changes, this means user interface. This is what you see when you log into Groove, everything that you can click. This is called basically a user interface. And we are changing up our user interface in Groove, and I'm going to just show you how it looks like now. Um, we are mainly uh, adapting the platform to to huge devices. When you are uh, when you're working on your business, is like developing your sites, creating email sequences, memberships, videos, uploading uh, videos, and things like that, is being done from desktop or laptop devices. In certain cases, there are users who have huge uh, lap uh, huge screens those huge iMacs and I don't know, maybe the super wide, uh, those angled monitors and things like that. And Groove looks pretty bad on those devices because it stretches out. What we did with, uh, or what we are working on currently is making everything nice and tidy in the middle. So for example, you will see Groove Cell. We already did that. So whether you are going to go in a on a big device or a, or, a, or a small device, you're going to see it much nicer. It's not going to elongate. It's going to stay in the middle so you can see all of the, all of the necessary um, options in the middle of your screen. So we did this for Groove Cell. We, I believe, did this for Groove Video already as well. Yes, yeah, so you can see, just make it nice and tidy in the middle of the screen. I believe we did this for Groove Blog as well. Um, yeah, so you can see the blogs are here. We are doing this for Groove member, I believe. Yeah, it may not have been done. So you see um, how, how if I zoom in, it's staying in the same position. But if I zoom out, it kind of elongates and it's it's making it much, much wider and it does not have to be there. So this is what we are working on currently. I can see that the team already did this part. So we kind of made that part stuck in the middle, but the, but the menu items are not yet done. So this is being worked on. Um, yeah, so we are going to do everything in the 
in the dashboards. Also, the main dashboard is going to get the same treatment. But this is also happening when you go into, for example, something like reporting. Reporting is also much uh, nicer in the middle of the screen now. Or, for example, a product funnel. Like you go into a product funnel, everything is nicely in the middle of the screen. So it's not a huge change, but it's a very necessary change for uh, those people that have big screens. All right, so this is one of the first things that uh, I just wanted to talk about so that you can see the visual changes happening inside the, inside the dashboard. Moving on, we have Groove Pages 2.0. I showcased a video last week on some of the changes, like global blocks, saving of elements, elements library. Um, we have been working on some extra stuff, but I am happy to say that I can show you now everything live, what we worked on. So if I log into our pre-production server, which is this one over here, show you the changes that I showed you last week in a video, I can show that to you here live. So this, what you're seeing is going to be changed. We're still working on, on uh, different changes. We are going to be moving this mini, um, mini menu here in the sidebar. We're going to be merging it together with, uh, with other um, items, but there will be changes on here. We'll have uh, basically a newer layout, a newer design of what we have here a little bit changed, not a lot. But here is our new Groove Pages 2.0. Here we have the elements and the elements library. And as you can see here, we have saving of elements. I'm going to show you how that looks like. And we improve the elements library that it shows the actual saved elements. So for example, if you save a button, you will see the buttons uh, either here or in your saved buttons option. So you, we'll show the pre-designed buttons by the designers in the buttons library, but your saved buttons, uh, you'll be able to have a, se a separate section for them with a star. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a star marked on it. And then you can just very, very simply uh, click, drag and drop on the canvas where you actually saved your elements. This is going to be very handy when you have like a, I don't know, you you created a countdown timer and you don't want to style it each and every time from scratch. And you don't want to kind of duplicate and then drag it all the way down on the on the canvas. You can really quickly save that uh, countdown timer, for example. It's going to come in a separate, separate category inside the elements library, and then you can just drag it and drop it wherever you want, not only on that one page or that one site, but also on the other sites as well. All right, so that's one of the things. So you'll be able to kind of drag and drop. But what I wanted to show you, uh, you probably, if you were here last week, I showcased the, the new blocks library. So we have the designer blocks, direct response blocks, wireframe blocks, pop-ups, mega menus, and things like that. So this is all as we had it previously. Um, so there is no change. It's just that a different UI, different representation of the blocks. But let me just, um, let me just put a, block on the canvas just simply to play with it a bit. When you want to save an element, you can just click on it and then click the star button. It's going to show up a, a save pop-up so that you can save the element in the section that you want. All right, and then let's just uh, quickly save it as roof Q&A button, All right? We go. So we saved it as a Groove Q&A button, and then I have it here, Groove Q&A button. It says the name, and then it's here. If you want to delete it, you can just uh, delete it from here, and that's basically it. All right, so let's see. Uh, saving of elements in the elements library. I showcase both global blocks. Global blocks, as I mentioned last week, this is, uh, this is coming real soon. We are changing some of the stuff on here. Uh, we're going to put the global blocks directly in that uh, block library. So we will have the, uh, the global blocks available here as well, not as a separate entity as we, as we planned at the beginning. So uh, this is a change being worked on. But how it will work is just as a regular pop-up. So when you create a global block, it's going to allow you to kind of put on sections or, or designs on here as well. So for example, you want to do a one column something and then start designing, you can do all of that. So there's a there's a small delay on here. Um, this is this is still in the pre-production server. So that's why it shows like that. But let's just come back 
and let's just put a block as it was intended. So let's just select this yellow block. We have now this yellow block and once we save or save and exit, we'll be able to use this block on different pages. And once we want to update it, we just come and update the actual global block, not on the pages itself, but we update the global block and it will update on all pages. So that's how it works. Um, we have also a block clipboard. A block clipboard is basically um, a very quick way to to reuse your blocks. I'm going to show you. So we have a block on Canvas and we have this clipboard button. When you click this, add to clipboard, it, it now shows here, but this clipboard block is also going to be merged with the, with the regular um, add block section. So it's going to be here. So you see the clipboard and you can just really quickly reuse it. This is, um, this is very similar to the save saved blocks but the difference is that the clipboard block is staying saved until you refresh the page so now as you can see we have this clipboard block highlighted that means that there is a block inside here but if i actually save and refresh this builder um let's see saving content saved if i refresh the builder the clipboard should the, the blocks in the clipboard should not be there anymore because it just stays saved temporarily so if i want to now add it from the clipboard it's not there so this is really simply if you want to copy paste a block somewhere and then it stays in the clipboard you can just reuse it when you re once you refresh the the builder it's not there anymore all right let's see what we have else here adding blocks on canvas yeah so Adding blocks on canvas is now done with this plus button. We are working on an option where you hover on a block, you will have a plus on the top and plus on the bottom, which will mean that you can add blocks above or below the block that you hovered on. Uh, that's being worked on right now. I do not have that on, on here so to show you, but uh, that's what being worked on. Oh, and a very cool thing that we are also uh, still improving is the dragging and dropping. So for example, if I want to, Let's just clone this. If I want to drag this text over here, previously it was done through a drag uh, drag handle. Previously we had it here inside the box, then we uh, dragged it outside the box, but now we will also be able to do just this, like click on the element itself and then drag it out, uh, like just this. Like it's super simple. We, we will not need to have a specific drag handle for certain elements for certain elements that have containers we will need to we will need to add something because uh when you have micro elements in a container like you have a text and an image or something like that, multiple elements in a container in in certain cases does not know what you want to drag so would you like the text or the container to be dragged and then it's kind of hard to select it so on in those cases we'll have a drag handle um yes and yeah so we have minor fixes there was a um an issue report last night i believe it was last night that uh when you export a site the export file does not include the, the links on the buttons that was fixed for example last night and things like that so minor fixes are still happening but mainly the, the cool and sexy stuff is this groove pages 2.0 so yeah that's basically something that i have talked about last week, but I, I couldn't show it because I didn't have access to it yet. Now that I have, you have seen what we what we did. All right, um, let's just move back to our quick slides and let me show you, or let me tell you about the Groove Cell. We are currently working on the development of the Paystack payment gateway. Paystack is, is uh, I believe, a South African uh, payment gateway that supports also two or three more countries inside Africa uh, that's being worked on most probably uh, next week we will have that after that we are going to do changes on the affiliate marketplace this was long awaited we should have done that uh, already last year but there were some different priorities that popped up but what we are doing is changing some of the numbers changing some of the designs changing some of the the layouts within the groove cell product uh, affiliate marketplace so if you go into groove cell and then the affiliate marketplace on here uh we we don't want to show some of these options but we want to show some of the other options and then we are 
um, we are basically going to work on the on this layout a little bit, the the number calculations, the uh, how it's presenting it, and things like that. And uh, we want to make it publicly available. Currently, you have to be logged into to your Groove account to access the marketplace, but we are making it. Uh, making it publicly available so everybody can access it, even if they do not have a Groove accounts. Uh, because when you have a, your product, you you want to sell it through an affiliate marketplace. It you want to have as much um, kind of reach as possible. So this is what we are doing: making publicly available so others can promote it, uh, promote your products uh, from the marketplace as well. All right, we are working on some uh, changes on the new integrations architecture. So all of the integrations that we currently have inside Groove, we have recreated with a new, completely new system. And we still have a couple of changes uh, that we need to do. And then most probably next week, this by next week, this will come live. Uh, this, will, uh, this will make things available like uh, putting tags um, in certain integrations like for example i believe active campaign has that you don't only put the context to a list but you also apply a tag in certain in certain uh, integrations maybe aweber maybe active campaign or get response not sure which ones but you can also trigger an automation uh just by using this inbuilt integration for Groove. so that's pretty cool all right, let me move back here. Uh, we are also working on the affiliate email uh, notifications. Affiliate email notifications, this is when somebody signs up as an affiliate and then there are system emails being sent out to them. Like, for example, if they made a sale, if they referred somebody and things like that. With the affiliate not email notifications, you'll be able to change those emails, those system emails that are being sent, and you'll be able to... Um, first, you'll not be able to change them most most probably, I believe that's the next step. First, you will be able to connect your sender and then kind of send those emails from your sender. Like it's going to be Kevin Strite is sending the email, not Groove is sending email for Kevin Strite. All right. That's just a, an example. I just saw Kevin as the last comment on here. So I just mentioned his name. But uh, yeah, so sender is the first thing. And then the changing up of the system emails is the next thing. We also have a couple of developers who are working on code refactoring. This is basically uh, cleaning up the code of, for GrooveSell. There's a lot of code in, inside GrooveSell. We want to kind of make it a bit more um, easy to handle and kind of tidy so that we can uh, we can develop for GrooveSell faster. We can uh, have less clutter and less issues this will also increase the speed this is not visible change that is being worked on but it's a very important change for the future if we're kind of uh planning the the increase of of number of features like the wallet system and uh, and things like that this is this is needed first so that we can we can expand all right uh Next thing, Groove Member version two is getting a bunch of uh, changes, and um, and happily, I will tell you, we have some of those on test servers. I'm going to show you in a moment, but we are finalizing the global course library. I'm going to show you how that looks like. You'll be also able to add favicon page title settings and basically the OG image for your uh, for your. Um, pages inside the membership. Also, you'll be able to inject code like in the footer or the body or the sorry, the header footer or, or the body of the of the membership. So you'll be able to trigger some things like pop-ups and, and I don't know, all sorts of different codes, like pixels, for example. Development of members and content importer. This is something I saw a question earlier. So this is being worked on right now. First, we will have the member importer from version one to version two. And most probably this will come with a CSV importer as well that is going to allow you, if you have members in Kajabi or Kartra or ClickFunnels or somewhere else, to import those members to Groove member directly. And then we have minor fixes. But I think we are ready here to just jump in and open the... What I'm going to show you today is is just on the test server. So this is still undergoing tests. It's not uh, it's not available publicly yet. We are now running the test, doing the, the necessary fixes. And after that, we're going to be releasing it 
to you guys. But I cannot keep my mouth shut, so I'm going to show you <laughs> what we are working on. And let me just zoom in. So if we go to Groove Member, this is on the test server. As I as I explained, you do not have access to this one yet. It's coming very soon. But uh, you can see that we have changed up uh, some of the icons on here. So we have memberships, courses, portals, files, instructors, members, and analytics. Right. So here, when you go into memberships, this is what you currently see normally. And if you go into a membership, you'll be able to add courses. If you go here to manage courses, uh, we'll see something like this. And we'll be able to add courses from the course library. This is going to be like the video library. It just has courses. You can select and unselect the courses that you want. It has a lazy loading of all your courses, but it has also a search bar and a sorting capabilities. You can categorize your courses, and then it's going to show the the basically you can sort your courses like the first created, last created, so you can you can uh, find your courses much faster. All right, so once you have selected your courses, and this is the global course library that I'm showing you right now. Um, so you, for example, created a course, but you want to sell it in this membership, but also in this membership and that membership. So you can use one course and sell it in multiple different memberships. All right, if you don't have a course created yet, you can create it very simply from here. You select a category or add a category, and then it's going to allow you to just continue developing it, the course will immediately be added to the global course library so you can select it on other memberships as well. All right, so this is something that is um, that is currently being worked on. As you can see, there are some UI issues, like there is no gaps in between here, and uh, these uh, tags are kind of getting overlapped. So there are still changes being done, uh, but this is what the global course library is. Another thing that we are working on is for, uh, let me just exit out from here and go back to the memberships. So if we go into the membership site, and if you go to customize, here you have uh, here you have some settings, and this is for the for the main membership settings. So we have a favicon option, so you can upload your favicon. Um, you also will have, this is currently being tested, you will also have uh, options to put in code. Like, for example, if you're using this site, the membership site, to uh, kind of bring in customers and then to, to get access to your freebie, you can tag them in certain way using pixels or, or you can do all sorts of uh, different things using Google Analytics and such. You could also set up your open graph or social share settings in here. But uh, this is for the whole site. You could also go into different specific pages and then go into the edit, edit option. And here you can add the meta keywords, meta description, code includes, open graph settings, and things like that. What the uh, important thing was that the page title and the, and the page name, when you open Groove Member or your course, is going to most probably show Groove Member, Groove Member. But with this change, you can now edit all of those options so that it shows what actually you want to show. So you'll be able to change all of that right now. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Not a huge update, but it's a very important update. It's basically very important for SEO and to trigger all sorts of different pixels and tracking and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's it. Um, cool. Uh, let me just check. What else? All right, uh, Groove Video plus Groove Webinar. We are working on a couple of things for Groove Video and Groove Webinar. It's it's very related. It's it's kind of the same technology in, in certain cases uh, for streaming and storage and things like that. So it, so I'm mentioning it together. Um, so we are working for Groove Video on the chunk upload and improved video encoding. This is something when you upload a video to Groove Video directly, not through YouTube, but directly to our hosting. We are we are doing something that is going to improve that uh, that functionality and also make the loading of videos much faster. Um, we are also working on the integration tab for Groove Video. This is, um, I believe, this is uh, it, this should have. Uh, 
this should have been done by this week, but it's it's uh, getting delayed. Uh, there are some of the things that we what we needed from the designers to to help us on. So we are going to be doing that or releasing that probably next week. Um, if if it passes my testing. All right, coming next week. Uh, this is already done. It is uh, on the test server. I'm going to show you one of these. Uh, YouTube videos for free users. This is being now tested by me. So currently only paid users have that unbranded and unlimited YouTube um, YouTube upload. Uh, free users will still have limits on it. I believe it's five videos, but you will be able to, uh, or the free users will be able to use uh, YouTube videos without actually connecting their Amazon SES accounts for, not Amazon SES, Amazon AWS accounts, basically for storing of the videos. So you'll be able to just use uh, YouTube videos on a free accounts without any kind of integrations necessary. Um, links and embeds in the wizard. So this is uh, something I'm not quite sure if I mentioned already, but when you are uploading a video or just editing a video um, inside the Groove video on here, so we have details, settings, and video elements here. There will be another option, which is going to be called links and embeds, where you will basically get uh, this. All right, so you'll get this one, but within the wizard. So you don't have to set up your video exit in order to get the, uh, get access to the video file or the video hosted page, or basically the embed. So yeah, that's uh, one of those things. Multiple receivers so questions on the Groove webinar. I mentioned that last week. This is something that we're also working on, and the Groove video library in Groove webinar. And this is something I can show you. So. Or uh, test. Okay. So come on. Okay. So in Groove Webinar, when you are adding in a, a video for a new webinar. We had an option to, to select Groove videos. It was a drop down menu. Okay, it seems that the webinars test server is a bit slow. Let me just go back. All right. Um, well, we'll wait a little bit. But what we had is just a drop down where you select the videos from a drop down menu. But now we are going to be loading the full on. Groove video library. It's basically going to look like this. So you can select the video that you want to use for your automated webinar. Not sure what's the story with the test server in here. We'll need to double check, but that's what we developed. All right, uh, moving on. Groove cart. We are, uh, we are getting the visual builder changes ready for release. This is the latest information I got from the developers that um, there's just um, a couple of tweaks uh, necessary, but it's going to it's going to be released any day now. I don't have access to the test server, but there's a I believe a list of fifty or sixty different things that were done uh, without any kind of fixes, um, just features and improvements for the new visual builder. So I'm going to be playing with that one once I have access to it. I'm going to show that also once it's it's uh, available to me, but. Currently, I can show you something that um, that the team is also working on inside GrooveCart, and that is a simplified uh, simplified product wizard. So, you know, the product wizard it looks like in Groove Cell, but what we are working on is something like this, where you will come into create a product in GrooveCart, and then you'll have many, like not that much information that you need to set up in order to create your product. It's going to be uh, like scrollable. So you're going to scroll down and you'll be filling up the information. Once you fill out the information, then you're good to go. So information, pricing, variance, upsell, order bumps, SEO. So these are optional, but these are the necessary ones. So this is how it's going to look like. This is just a, a mock-up, but this is what the team is working on currently. Uh, so in case you have a downloadable file, you'll have uh, options to download it here, uh, adding on different media, 
and things like that. So yeah, this is this is the improved or simplified product wizard for GrooveCard that we are working on here. Um, yeah, so we are also working on an integration with Icon Ecom. This is a, a print on demand supplier that is going to be offering, um, what's it called? Uh, Customize, customize or personalized uh, products. So in case you uh, you create a t-shirt and you say X, Y, Z is the best mom ever. And then, and then a customer that comes onto your store instead of X, Y, Z will be able to type in a name like Joanna is the best mom ever, for example. So it's going to allow you to create these types of stores with personalizations. All right, and then there is also uh, also minor fixes from uh, from the support team and from uh, from you guys that uh, are reporting some different issues. We are kind of working always on those fixes. Groove blog, Groove blog is getting a couple of uh, tweaks. One of them is when you click on a post image, like for example, Groove.cm for slash blog. This was working before. For some reason, it, it stopped working. When you click on an image, it does not open the post. So only by clicking on the actual title, it opens the post. So that we are fixing right now. Uh, so clicking on the image will also open the post. And the next thing is post sorting. Like we'll have the option to post to sort the post by date, by last updated first, or the, or the, the new or the latest post uh, first. Uh, not newest, latest. So this is this is important when you are transferring over a blog from a different platform to GrooveBlog. Uh, in certain cases, you just kind of go by the newest, like you copy the newest article into GrooveBlog, but GrooveBlog currently sorts it by the by the last updated. All right. So if you if you create a post, that's going to come on the top. But if you are creating new post, the first post is going to get kind of buried down. Uh, so uh, users requested to be able to sort the different posts like by the date because if you if you're using dates on your blog posts you can then sort them sort a blog post by date like for example your previous uh, blog platform was WordPress and in 2020 you published a blog post you want to bring that over to Groove but you don't want it to be uh, with the current date by today's date you want to backdate it then you'll be able to create that blog post and not have it shown immediately on the home page but you it will be shown uh with the posts that were created in 2020 so basically sort the posts by date All right not a not a huge change but it's a very important change after that we are doing some minor fixes by the way we uh we developed for groove blog the a couple of tweaks for seo like uh, the lang tag the language tag is now available and built into groove uh, or basically built into your groove blogs and a couple other tweaks i'm going to post in an announcement today all right groove mail the email builder uh, is being worked on and we are currently working on the template library and i will show you that one today um, and also the the work is still being work, uh, done on the activity logs and automations. But let's have a look how the how the Groove Mail rich email builder looks like. All right, so let's just check here. Oh, right. So if we go into Groove Mail. The new email builder will be available for broadcasts and sequences. So when you create a broadcast, for example, this one, you'll have three options to use the basic email editor. And most of the times I'm going to use this one, like just typing the text, putting in the variables and basically maybe some links and that's it. You also have an HTML content. If you if you created your email in HTML format, then you can just paste it in here and then click the preview and then it's going to show you. But we have this third option where you can compose your mail. Now we are working on a, uh, currently on the template library and the pagination for it. We have almost 100 or sorry, 1,500 templates that were created for, for the email builder. 
so they look pretty cool you can preview them in here so this is an email that you'll be able to, to use so let me just show you how it looks like so there's the email builder it loads in and that's basically it so you can see it has all of the elements that you may need in a in an email let me just zoom out so um, the email builder is also block based so you have rows and sections and uh, and there you can put in your content so for example you can click on the on the image and make it bigger you can make it smaller you can make it full width on mobile you can center a line right align and things like that you can move it up and down and you can do all sorts of funky stuff with it but basically it's a full rich email builder you want to put in a a link to a button you can just add it in here it will open a web page or uh, send an email or make a call send an sms you can just click in here and, and read like just type uh, some other stuff on the button like uh, click here now something like that so it's beautiful it's simple you can also uh, do something like Hey, then you can put in a merge tag, first name. Hey, first name, click here now. So you'll be able to put in um, on buttons and things like that uh, inside the text. You'll be able to put in these merge tags like uh, the name, the first name, last name, um, email, phone number, a city, state, and things that things that the uh, the the contact that came into GrooveMail filled out through your form. So. Yeah, that's basically the email builder. It has different rows. You can you can design similarly like in, in Groove pages. And then you have settings of the email itself, um, what the background color is, what the default font is. Let me just move my head away. Uh, link colors, what the kind of color the link will have, what font it's uh, the email is going to be defaulted to. Do you want to center align everything or left align? How wide do you want the email to be? and yeah things like that so it's it's pretty cool uh, there is a couple of changes that are still being worked on but this is coming soon for you guys um we are working as i mentioned on the pagination of the template library on how the templates will load the different categories the lazy loading of the templates and yeah things like that so it's it's real soon it's it's going to be in your accounts but it looks pretty pretty cool um all right let's see what else we have and that's basically it the last uh the last template was oh, sorry the last slide was for groove mail all right um uh, just a reminder we are going to have a webinar real soon and that's happening in 45 minutes so in case you are interested in in the training how to write a book to grow your business make sure you check out the the pinned post in our uh, in our Facebook community, click on this link, register, and you'll get an email when it's time to just log in to the webinar platform. All right, but what we are going to do is we are going to hide all of this stuff and start answering the questions that were asked previously. Hopefully you like this kind of content where I go through everything to explain what's happening, what's being worked on, because I know I would, if I would be a person that purchased Groove and I just cannot wait to see what's what's new and sexy coming out i would love these updates so that's why i want to kind of keep you in loop as well um all right um yes so let me just jump into the questions of the facebook post cool so here we have the questions um i'm going to zoom in a bit is there or will there be a way we can link text to a block or any area inside Groove Pages. Uh, JC, that's already available. Let me just show you. So linking to a block, it's already done. It was done at the beginning of 2020, I believe, if I'm correct. So um, yeah, that's, that's nothing new, but I'm going to show you how it works. There is, however, something new that I'm going to also kind of uh, give you a sneak peek of. But first, to answer the question, if you have, for example, uh, let's just put on a block with navigation bars. Let's just put on this blue one. If you have a navigation bar, but only one page, 
and you want to maybe scroll down to a different section, like for example here to this block. All right. So I'm going to uh, going to call this block. So I clicked on the block section. I can see here in the upper right that this is called block. But I'm going to click on this pencil icon, and this will allow me to rename the blocks. I'm going to call this funnel breakdown. Right. Once it's done, once you're done with the name, just click the check mark, and then now you have named this block. What this will allow us to do is go into the actual uh, navigation menu over here. So the nav menu, configuration. I'm going to exclude this page, but add an external link. So one external link that I will call uh, funnel breakdown. Right. And I can select the link to be connected to a block over here. And I can select the blocks one, two, three, four, five, and da 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 da. But you can see we have a funnel that we just named earlier called funnel breakdown. So I'm going to select this one and click update. Here you can see in a moment that it changes. So now we have the funnel breakdown as the as the navigation item or the clickable item. This same thing can be done with just a normal button. Uh, just a normal button if we have something like link to a block or just a text link or something like that. If you're talking about hyperlinking um, the text here, you can still do it, but it's a little bit more complex. The thing that you have to do is know where the page is published. All right, so I'm going to copy the actual URL. And then this element, when you click on it, here in the custom attributes, it has an element ID attribute. All right, so you can call this element ID uh, text. Or let's just do it for the block. Let's just click on the block and, and see the element ID. All right, so it has already an element ID. So we can then hyperlink this. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Uh, URL of the of the page forward slash hashtag elements ID. That's going to be the the link that we need. All right. And then I can copy this, hyperlink it with this one. So it's going to be the URL of the page. Let me just do it one more time. URL of the page forward slash hashtag and then the attribute of the um, of the block. So that's basically, now we created a link and if I publish, let's just test it out real quick. And then we have the text that we linked. It's going to now load that section because we linked to it. So it, it loads from the start of the block. All right. So that's how you do it if you want to hyperlink text. So you copy the URL of the publish page and then you check the blocks element ID and then you basically put it together with the hashtag. That's if you want to hyperlink it and then this is if you want to link it to something else. But now that I have your attention, I want to show you a cool new thing that was released yesterday. I'm going to be doing an announcement about it today. And I'm going to explain you why that was uh, created. When you click on a button or anything that you can link uh, link to something, you will have config in configurations. You will have an option to do quick pop-ups. All right, quick pop-ups are tool is a, is a tool uh, that lets you uh, display a pre-made pop-up without needing to create a completely new one from scratch. All right. Um, so this is if you, for example, want to create a pop-up that will have a groove mail form on it. So instead of going to a pop-up, then drag creating a new pop-up, dragging out a, a custom, uh, basically the the groove mail four element, selecting the groove mail form element, publishing it, going back to the button, linking the button, and things like it has like ten steps in between. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just go to quick pop-ups, select the groove mail uh, groove mail form? to show as a quick pop-up, select the GrooveMail form, and you're done. Uh, this is now 
the quick pop-ups functionality. So what we what we did first is we did uh, we did the normal linking options. So you can create a pop-up where you will show a page, you will show a block, you will show a URL, you will show a, your blog or a cart. So let me just show you with a URL, and I actually have that already done. So I have created a quick pop-up with an external URL that will load an iframe. So it actually loads the website as a pop-up. So in case you have, for example, your website that you created as an offer or, or, or just a pricing page that you want to kind of go in detail with or something like that, you can put it hidden on your website but show it as an iframe and then it's going to look like this. If people are done, they just click outside and that's basically it. So this is a very cool thing. We are going to be adding in more options in here. There will be Groove Mail form, Groove Video, um, Groove Webinar registration, Groove Webinar, um, all sorts of different elements from Groove Webinar, and then maybe calendars in the future, quizzes, surveys, all as quick pop-ups. So you don't actually have to go into pop-ups, click the plus button, create a pop-up from here, then drag on blocks on there, or maybe just an element, then embed the element, then save it, then go back to the button, connect it, and things like that. It's just a real quick pop-up. You just go back there, select it, and then boom. So... I, I'm super excited about this feature. This is a really cool. We are still at the beginning of this one, of what it can do, but I'm really uh, seeing a big, a big increase in the speed of development of sites. All right. Um, yes, let's just go. Okay, I don't need this anymore. So this was the answer to JC's question. How many people have access to GrooveMail SMTP so far? I do not have the number of how many people, but I can tell you in approximately the date where we are, where uh, we are releasing the SMTP. So we have covered the whole 2019 year for everybody that purchased uh, Groove. And now we are in April 2020. Yeah, 2020. This was when our big launch was. This is when uh, COVID started and where we did this promo where uh, we gave away Groove for free and also where we gave away Groove Pages uh, Lite for free. So this is now what's uh, being worked on. Since it was a launch, there was thousands of people that got access to it. So we are going to be staying on April a little bit uh, longer. I believe for three or four days, we're already... Um, like we are releasing it to to people that joined in April, but we are wrapping, uh, uh, we are increasing the number of people that we are giving access to GrooveMail. Uh, until today, we were releasing it to 150 people, but today we are doubling that, so 300 people every day will get access to GrooveMail SMTP. So far, sending is very good. The deliverability is very good. We're happy with that, so that that's why we can increase the the number of people that get access to the GrooveMail SMTP. All right, moving on to the next one. How can I make sure people don't receive my GrooveMail automated emails during weekends? I don't think currently we have the option to, to select which day to send and which day not to send. Um, if we would have, you would probably kind of find it. That would be very easily done in the email settings. Uh, but since we do not have that yet, then unfortunately we cannot. Uh, maybe you could do um, maybe you could do something like this one. Um, unfortunately, there is no way to kind of set up. Okay, skip weekends. Uh, but I can tell you the weekends are the most open times for emails because people uh, are at home or people are not working and not annoyed by uh, by emails. So I don't know your goals with that functionality but if you send emails on weekends people will open it all right um but this is something that we are planning in the future how can we change the background color of a button in groove pages so that when you hover over the button it uh, isn't just a standard gray but can be darker color that matches the actual button color all right, so this is the hover setting. Let me just show you. In certain cases, you have this gray hover. In, if you just dragged out a regular element, this gray hover will be on there by default. But if you want to remove that, it's very simply by just selecting the button, 
make sure that it says here button on the top right right corner and if you head over to states you click on hover you can see that immediately shows the the how the hover looks like so in the background you can change this color to maybe let's just say green and if you click off then it shows the normal state so the normal state of the button is pink but if i hover over it it's green that's because we set up the hover to be green all right so it's just by selecting the element clicking on the state hover and then changing the background and this way you can manage the the hover settings of that button all right uh paula had a question about the the timing of the q a scott nielsen has a question about do you have a time frame when undo redo icon will be added to post in groove blog um we are discussing this one at this moment i do not think it is possible but we are considering different options on how to do it because it's a it's a text editor it does not remember each and every stroke of the key um but we are considering how to do that one. This was, uh, this is on the timeline, and this is on the to-do list. But at this moment, we're just finding out a way to do it properly. Uh, can you explain how the new proposed nice links will be different than short links like Bitly? It would be nice to create an affiliate link we can use in social ads that use prefixes in a custom domain and sell design suffix to the link number itself. You can actually do that right now already. So it's not something that you need to wait for. You could create a redirect from your domain already in Groove. I, I will show you how to do it. But we will have an easier way to manage your short links or those pretty links. Uh, but I'm going to explain what pretty link is and what a short link is. All right, Short link is something like Bitly or Cutly or something like that. That means that there is a... There's a very, very short and two two letters or 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 a couple letters uh, domain. So bit.ly. That's three letters with the TLD, which is ly, which is a top level domain, is dot ly. All right. Um, bitly, cutly, uh, and the other ones. I don't I don't know the names of them, but the the technology that they developed is everybody will be having the same domain, but the forward slash something can be different. So bit.ly forward slash uh, Scott Nielsen can be a short code for your site. Uh, but when somebody else tries to do the same bit.ly uh, forward slash Scott Nielsen, they will not be able to because it already is used by you. So this is a short link that is purposely created so that uh, one uh, one platform, one domain is serving multiple different uh, users or, or something like that. We will not be doing that, but we will do pretty links. Pretty links is going to be at a certain time coming to your domain settings, custom domain. And where you set up your custom domain, you'll have a link button, I believe, here, a third one or something like that, where you'll be able to go and, and create. Okay, uh, I want grooveassist.com. This is my root domain. I want grooveassist.com forward slash groove to, to redirect over to my affiliate link, for example. Right? And you will be able to click the, the icon in here, go and create that pretty link just, just like basically like when you're creating a subdomain. So you will type in where uh, what the forward slash something will be and um, where it will redirect. So that's going to be pretty links. It's, it's basically there will be two fields and then you'll be able to set up your own. But you could already set up this inside Groove Pages. What we did is a type of a page that you can redirect. Why we did that is because if you connected your custom domain to your uh, to a website in Groove Pages, that would be, uh, for example, you have, let's just see, grooveassist.com. I don't think I have it connected to a to a page yet, so I'm going to connect it here. So I'm going to select the custom domain and publish it on the root. Domain unavailable. I believe I have it published somewhere, maybe in GrooveBlog. Um, anyway, so let's just say that I have grooveassist.com uh, redirected to, or basically used on this website. That means that the... Um, when somebody opens the root domain, the website will open. But I want to create a quick redirect. That uh, I can do by just going into pages.
and creating an empty page and giving it a URL over here. Let's just say forward slash groove. You don't need a forward slash, just type in groove. Right? And then I can name it groove affiliate link. And here inside you have um, enable page redirection. So you can redirect to an external URL or an internal page. I'm going to put in external URL and I can now take my um, affiliate link. Which I have here. I'm just going to copy the affiliate link and I can paste it in here. So now this page is not pink. It's it's. Uh, it's yellow and it says page redirection is on. That means if somebody types in grooveassist.com forward slash groove, this is going to redirect them over to our uh, to our affiliate link. So basically I created a page that acts as a redirect link. So I can hide it. I can just drag it up. I drag it down so it's not visible in the navigation. I could maybe chuck it up in a, in a funnel folder, for example. Um, so it's it's still on my site, but it's out of the way. It's out of the site. Site, not the site, not the website. But um, yeah, this is how you can create pretty links already without that ex that extra functionality that I showed you. We will have that pretty link technology, but you can already do that. Um, all right, let's just go on and then answer the next pay, next question. When creating a squeeze page to place between the social uh, social ad and the affiliate vendor site in order to collect a mailing list, would it be better to use a pop-up form in Groove Pages or a form we create in Groove Mail? There were tests done by uh, by people on this one, so if you want, you can check out the. There is a 101 split test by Russell Brunson or something like that. There was also a split test done by people like Frank Kern and Mike Phil Same. And there are diff different results. They vary. In different cases, uh, people kind of want to know fair and square what the offer is. And then they, they basically type in their information if interested. But from the research that I read from Russell Brunson, he found out that... Uh, when when we don't ask for the action immediately on the main page before the people are introduced to to the actual offer like for example you redirect someone on the page and you just say get this xyz uh, where you can learn how to do da 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 without da 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 all right and then there may be an image there may be a video but a big huge call to action without any kind of form without any kind of things this um this acts a little bit more powerful in that research uh, they say that it acts a little bit more powerful because there is no ask immediately from the customer if you put on a form it looks immediately like work that you need to do but i this is not a definitive answer it completely uh, depends on your design of the page what kind of offer you have what is the actual ask in certain cases people ask to call them in, uh, in certain cases people ask for an email in certain cases people ask for a booking on the calendar i do not know what the actual goal of your page is but most of the times affiliate offers like you want to collect a mailing uh, the, the mailing address or and or a name um uh, not or <laughs> a name and an email or just an email um but definitely test it out. Like, see how much success you're having with one or the other. I would not leave it like up for imagination. Like, oh, what would happen if I did this or what would happen if I did that? I would just create two pages, run the same ad uh, for the same budget on one page, and run the same ad on the same uh, budget to the other page. That's how I would split test this one and then see which one converts. If one converts higher than the other, just turn all of the traffic on for that one that works. All right. Uh, I believe I answered the questions all for this one. So let me just see the questions from the live stream. All right. Oh, a lot of questions. Cool. Let's start. Hi, David. Thanks for the video earlier. When can we import group member version one courses to version two? We are, I believe I mentioned that earlier, we are working on an importer. Or after the global course library is released with all of its fixes, 
that I showed you today, we are going to start working on the importer. We already have a basic uh, understanding and a basic infrastructure of the importers, but it still needs to be worked on. What percentage of paid members have Groove Mail? I don't know the percentage. I talked about that earlier. Um, let me just see. What is the best way to find out find out about an unpaid commission? I had Groove Affiliate sale February 20th and put in four tickets, but I haven't had a response yet. Uh, I don't know who you are, but definitely check up with the with the support on chat. Um, or do this, jv at groovedigital.com. Okay, let's see. Hi, David Lemon. I'm not going to ask them the same question again. This time is a different one. Well, is there any option if I upload any pic in the gallery or a single image in the container? And after publishing the website, when I want to click on the pic, it should zoom out uh, or a big image pop out. Um, so basically, you want to create a light box. This is called the light box. When you click on an image, then it kind of shows up bigger. Um, we do not have the light box technology that you activate on an image. This is something that I believe we will have. But um, for for now, you could create a pop-up. You could create a, a pop-up that will show the image in a bigger version. I don't know who this is and what was the previous question, but is there any option if I upload any pic in the gallery or a single image in the item container and after publishing the website, when I want to click on the pic, it should zoom out or, yeah, that's only with the pop-ups currently. I set up a Facebook pixel on my website following your tutorial, but on the pixel helper, it comes up as warning Facebook pixel did not uh, load the description. Um, I don't know what that may be about uh check i i highly suggest when somebody has any kind of questions about pixels the pixel technology and facebook uh facebook related stuff changes very often so the best thing i would suggest you to do is um is to join a facebook group where these types of Facebook ads or Facebook conversion or Facebook, yeah, Facebook ad experts are, all right? The thing is that they talk about this day and night and they are the ones that have all of the knowledge on, on what to do in each case. So you could also search for Facebook pixel did not load uh, description in Google or just look on YouTube to find a solution for this one. I do not know if this is coming uh, as a problem from Facebook or if this is coming a problem from the page builder, but those people will know. So definitely, if you have a Facebook pixel related uh, question, I would I, I would definitely suggest you, you go out and uh, ask it in a, in a Facebook community or just search for it on YouTube or in Google. Unfortunately, I cannot help you with this one. Uh, David, I was trying to access group member version one, but there's no option to create member area using a group member. Can you check that if I'm doing something wrong? Gilmar, that's correct. We do not support it anymore for new memberships. We are uh, we are starting working on an importer, and we want people to get away from the version one because version one version version two is uh, much more developed now, has many more functions, and is just getting developed and and fixed and improved day by day so that's why we do not uh, support any more new memberships on the version one cannot wait to use global blocks what's the global option for mm, not sure what you mean global option most probably that was something during the groove pages uh, demo how do I set up a form in group pages so an action happens like a customer is emailed a PDF and also when they click submit, it goes to a thank you page or OTO. Um, so it depends. If you're using Groove Mail, you can set up a sequence in Groove Mail. When somebody gets added to a list, for example, uh, somebody fills out the form, you tag them, and then you start a sequence. This sequence can have uh, an email consist. Uh, that has the actual PDF in there. Um, and then the redirect on the form, the success page URL will be a thank you page or an OTO. So 
it's a basic flow it just depends what you use so if you're using groove mail or an external service that would be the same case so if you're using an integration like mailchimp for example you create the groove pages form and you put in uh put in the integration you select what list to uh, to send the contact on or to <laughs> where to send the contact to, and then uh, what page to redirect the user afterwards. And then inside MailChimp, you set up an email and you set up an automation. When somebody's added, uh, send out the sequence or send out this email. Um, in GrooveMail, that's the same thing. When will sales taxes be available in GrooveSell? Unfortunately, I do not have an idea. At this moment, um, I I do not know. I will need to double check, but currently it is not being worked on right now. All right. In Groove Pages, how to select different color for some words and some other color for some other words in the same sentence or different sizes or fonts or family for different words in the same line. You cannot choose different fonts or different sizes for um, for text in the same line. That's not possible. You can change the colors. You can bold certain words. Uh, but you cannot change the size of the of the text. Uh, let me just show you. So here we are, and this is our page. For example, I want to now use this heading, and I want to highlight this part. All right, new hot offer. I select this one, and as you can see, the text is dark, is basically black for the for this section. But I want this new hot offer to have a highlight of yellow. All right, so I'm going to highlight it with yellow. So this is now uh, how I took one word, or sorry, one uh, text element, and a couple of words I highlighted. The same thing is done by just changing the color. You select the text. This text editor menu pops up and then you can click this check mark and now you changed the actual text. If you change the text color with this one, this changes the element color. All right, so if I change it to blue, this changes the element color. But everything that you overridden using the text styling isn't changing, all right? You can, uh, you can select even letters and override them differently. You can create a... Um, something like this which i don't suggest but you can <laughs> uh, you could create something like this like a very ugly uh, looking page but there is something that you cannot do is change the sizes so on this uh, over override text style editor there is no size selector because the size is controlled by the whole element all right but you could uh you could put the uh, bold you can put the text in bold okay this does not have this parent default uh, font does not have bold but in certain other cases there are bold fonts let's see cabin doesn't have it as well barlow okay i'll need to double check why is that medium regular maybe now yeah so in certain cases some fonts with some weights have uh the option to make things bold and make things different but um not all so yeah that's what you can do you can underline part of the thing part of the words you can change it uh, i don't know okay this is for the whole for for the whole element but you can do things like that just by using this select text and override. But this is for the whole element. Oops, wrong camera. There we go. As global blocks going to be, are global blocks going to be added to group blog? No. Also, will the ability to add images to a lesson page be added in group member? To add images to a lesson page be added. That's already possible. So global blocks in Groove pages and global blocks in Groove, or basically any kind of blocks in Groove blog, they don't go together. Groove blog is a completely different type of builder. It does not work with blocks. You may be able to uh, to embed them later on, but not at the moment. 
but for adding in images into your lessons in Groove Member, that's already possible. I'm going to show you how. All right, so I'm going to edit the membership, manage courses, edit course. And here, if you, for example, have a section, let's just delete this one. Um, you can add images to pre-existing sections. So this little white square is a section. Why is my camera? All right. So this is a section. If you if you see, there's a plus button on here. You click the plus button, and there is an image option. So you can you can now add all sorts of different things inside your post. All right. So if you if you go lower, you can add more you can add a video you can add a button you can add a code you can add all sorts of different things using the plus button on here this is a same similar thing like in uh like in groove Lock. we also have the plus button and then we add on more content in there um okay let's get to the next question can we do recurring name your price subscriptions uh not yet that is going to be coming can you please show how it would be uh, how it would be the access to those advanced configurations in specific elements such as custom ID CSS in Groove Pages 2.0? Oh, what? How it would be the access to those advanced configurations is is, is the same. Like we didn't remove the the sidebar there is nothing that that we did in the 2.0 the sidebar is still there you just need to open it up i didn't show that one but the sidebar there's nothing new on that on the styling editor tags on integrations yeah uh editing system emails and sender is awesome yes it is hope this isn't a repeat question i love how uh the last row of colors held our custom color but that seems to have disappeared with the new rgb and hls uh, will it be coming back yes it is something that we are looking into uh the reason why we brought back the older uh color picker is because the colors that were offered by default so yeah by the way if you haven't seen it yeah i, I played with it on here but we brought back the color picker that we that we had previously so we had this color picker before uh we just did a couple of changes on here so that you can immediately see the the this i don't know 16 million colors um selector or something like that it's called i don't i don't really know but you can put in the hex code and hls and rgb immediately previously we had a little a little circle option on here that you needed to click in order to see this uh this option so the reason the main reason why we brought this back is because of this these uh these colors that that show up these are um how do i call it um mike had a great name for it these are pre-selected colors that work uh, that work very well in sales and direct marketing so this is why we had that previously developed for groove pages and when we removed that these colors disappeared and it is a very kind of important thing that we have uh, these colors added in here because these are the main colors in direct marketing. These are the, let's call it the highest converting colors that, that are out there, all right? We will have uh, most probably here or another line of, 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 uh, of colors here below. We're just looking into ways to add that in. These are going to be your color swatches or basically the, the, the saved colors, the recently used colors. Like, for example, I have this color and I use that now. It's, it's not one of these colors. So uh, if I use this color, it's going to show up uh, either here or here in the next line. So that's going to be coming. Um, but we are still unsure on how to exactly make it work. Uh, within the, the the color picker because um, uh, there is some tech stuff that that needs to be sorted before we before we add that on. But yes, that's the plan. Uh, all right, wrong camera. Sorry. I lost the comments. Hold on. All right, we love that you share. Uh, we we love that you like to share, David. 
course library is looking great. All right. Uh, thanks for another great Q&A. Uh, since yesterday, when adding a text element in Groove Pages, the ability to edit that new text element disappears from the toolbar on the right-hand side. However, exiting existing text elements that were brought in on the same page before yesterday are still editable. Is this an on glitch or something? Uh, we'll need to look into it. I'm not quite sure. So you're saying a new text element, if we bring it in, it's not editable. Let's just check. All right, so we can edit it. But you're saying that you cannot move back to it. The ability to edit the text element disappears from the toolbar on the right-hand side. Uh, not sure. Um, Andrew, if you could, please reach out to our support with a, with a detailed video and provide your account where that happens so that they can look into it a bit better. Oh, I cannot put my camera to cover the whole area. I move my desk a little bit back. Um, and now it, I always have a corner right now. It's here that is that is missing out. Anyway, any update concerning new portal functionality? Uh, Ismail, when I will give you an update uh, when I will talk about it, then there will be. For now, you do not need to ask every time. When will the Molly integration be ready? Actually, I already created an, uh, an announcement for that one. It's ready. You can go into GrooveCell and check it out. It's in GrooveCell only at this moment, so it's not in um, not in GrooveCart. But if you go into settings and then, oops, and Groove Affiliate. Hold on. If you go into the settings of your Groove cell, you can add a new payment. And then here we have Molly. Happy days. Um, I was preparing an announcement. I'm going to be doing a couple of announcements uh, for stuff that I showed you today. So yeah. Is this happening currently for you? It appeared for us a few nights ago, but cleared up within 30 minutes. OK, could be for Andrew, not sure. Um, along with global blocks, can we have an option to select multiple containers or element and have a single style editor change that apply to all the containers or block? At this moment, that's not something that we are planning. Uh, currently, you can request it in the feedback portal, but um, but I don't think that that this is something we will do. It will cause more confusion than 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 good. Global blocks help in building websites. We also need an option to modify multiple single containers and elements simultaneously. Um, there's not really need to do it. It's a shortcut for sure, but I don't think that this is necessarily if we already have saving of elements, saving of element styles and the global blocks and saving of the blocks and the block clipboard. There's definitely a way around it. Also, a container is an element, so you can save a container. So you can just save that container and then re-edit there. If if contract to, uh, to I sell a product for someone, can I set them up as a partner contract where they get an instance 90 and I get 10 of net plus have affiliates and second level of sub affiliates? Um, yes, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to the affiliate commissions are going to be calculated of the whole, so of the hundred percent that you and the other partner share. So basically, you're going to get less. Uh, but yes, you can set this up. I know this is not technology, but perhaps you can explain. If I put a, someone in a funnel, should it not be sending confirmations via Gmail? But Gmail is not working. Um, Gmail is an email sending platform and an inbox. If I put someone in a funnel, should it not be sending confirmations, et cetera, via Gmail? It's weird. Groove mail, maybe Groove mail. Not sure. But Groove mail is a mass email platform. Um, we are going to be adding, most probably you're talking about the senders, the, the one that I mentioned earlier, affiliate emails that are sent by the system are going to... Uh, going to get an upgrade where you will be able to select your sender and send using your own name like a deeper states mind and wellness will be sending an email and not the not groove all right so that's something that we are working on uh for groove cell first this is going to be coming for uh, for the other section not for the affiliate emails but for the 
for the emails when somebody buys something and then for uh, for a group member where somebody signs up for your membership when they receive their login details and things like that so we're slowly moving towards that um, system emails uh, that are being sent out to be first sent by uh, by you from your own sender and the second option will be to modify those uh, emails and then put your own content there what software is David using to make his background disappear in the video? I'm using OBS. OBS is a, is a free software, open broadcasting software. I just used the YouTube video and I learned how to use it. It's very simple. Um, all right. There is another question of the thing that I mentioned, so I'm not going to answer it again. And there's the thing that I, uh, that I just mentioned earlier, OBS, to remove the background video. Uh, on group blog we'll we'll be able to edit the create date ourselves you can already do that drew when you're creating a post you can just go into the post settings and edit that date uh when we upload an image and update its dimension while changing length in height and pixel these changes in proportion automatically and not what we want them to do uh, what them while changing length and height in pixel these changes in proportion automatically and not what we want because this is not crop you cannot crop it uh, with the with the numbers you can go in and edit the edit the image maybe you haven't seen that one but um i understand what you're saying so when you have an image like this one or let's just use this so this fixed aspect ratio it's basically you can modify it like like this but it's not going to crop it it's going to try to uh, it's not going to also squish the image it's going to try to to keep the aspect if you want to kind of make some more adjustments then do it like this or just fix the image first and then upload it uh, as it should be uh, up as it should appear on the on the end So I just, I want a uh, length 1200 and height 200, then it adjusts length accordingly while typing height pixel. I have no clue what this is for. How to remove images from the image gallery. You just go into image gallery, click on an image and delete it. All right, so click on an image and delete it from here. All right, so each and every image has this delete option. All right. Um, Will Groove be adding in a drag resize handles for images and e in the email editor and on the memberships builder? We have it on the page builder. Uh, it's going to get an update where it does not crop the, the image. Let me show you. So currently we have it here. You may have not seen it if you aren't exploring Groove that much. For example, let me show you here. So currently, this is an image, and we have, when you click this button, the second one, not the drag, uh, the, the move tool, but the actual second one, uh, drag handles show up. But what happens is, in certain cases, it it does not uh, keep the aspect ratio and it and it crops the image in certain cases now currently it keeps the keeps the sizing but in certain cases it uh, it crops the, the image so it kind of cuts off this this portion um so this type of thing is not available in each and every builder like the groove mail builder will not have this one we will have just a, a slider so you can um you can make the, the images bigger and smaller. And a Groove member, we may have something like this, but it's very, very complex. I believe we will we will not do this uh, because we would rather do two or three features than only one feature that will maybe be cool. So if we have just a slider to size the, the items on Canvas, that's good enough in our opinion. Not everything needs to be drag and drop and click and drag and things like that. A slider is good enough uh, because it's faster, it takes less time to develop and and less time to be tested, and it's, it's available. All right, it's available. It does not have to be selected a specific corner of the image and then drag it inside and things like that. Um, that's what we found. 
In GrooveMail, will the inserted image be hosted on our own domain or in a different domain? Because if images are hosted on a different domain, some filters will tag it as spam. Um, inserted images be hosted. This is using the Groove image library. So it's, it's not on your domain. It's on our domain. It's on Groove's domain where all of the images are hosted. Is GrooveMail working for you? And are, okay, this is for somebody else. When will the project functionality be released on the platform? What project functionality? I might have missed it, but I have not heard any news in Groove. So I'll check out Builder with the uh, languages option since. Uh, do you still plan to work on it? If yes, can we still expect it? Check out Builder uh, has, has been moved, probably will not be Q2. When I have more information on that one, I'll let you guys know. Is there any ability to allow a VA to log into your pages account and make updates with our, uh, without giving them my login info? Greg, I showed, uh, this is called team member management. I showed it on the last Q&A. Check the video, the Q&A uh, Q 19. It actually call, it's actually called Groove Pages 2.0, Sneak Peek and Team Member Management or something like that. Uh, this is currently being tested by us. It's a very big feature because it gives access to everything that uh, that is available in an account. So it needs to be done like it needs to be tested thoroughly and 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 very very hardcore testing needs to be done first before we release it. Hi David, nice to see you again. If I delete a website in Groove, is there a way to get it back? I'm so scared to delete sites. Uh, if you delete a site you won't be able to get it back. Just if you're not using it, just leave it there. We will have an option that will say archive instead of delete. If you currently delete it, it's deleted, like really, really deleted. Archive is going to save it for some time. Uh, you will be able to maybe bring it back. We'll maybe have an archive tab so you can say like bring it back. Uh, but currently if you click delete, it's going to go away. Uh, thank you, David. I feel so silly. I missed the hover area. I must uh, have uh, too much on my mind with all the amazing new features in group. Um, Amanda, no worries. You can pop on anytime and ask. Uh, have you guys ever thought about doing live classes that just build beautiful funnels and pages so people can learn? Frank, I did that. The issue is if you check the videos from the past year, I did that and I had daily sessions. They, every day I went in, I built out um, I don't know, uh, what's it called? Coming soon pages. Then I build four or five in one session. Then I build a website. Then I build a funnel. Then I connect it to, to Groove Cell, Groove Member, and everything. The thing that people didn't like is that it was long. So basically, if I do a full build, then it's too long and people complain about it. So what we are currently working on is we are going to be doing courses with a lot of short videos. Um, and the first one is being prepared by me. So uh, so that's, that's what we came to. There was I, actually my videos where each video was a course that you sit down, watch, and you know how to do a certain thing. Like when I was teaching how to do an FAQ page or how to do a one page website or how to do a one product store in GrooveCard. These were all one hour, one hour and a half, two hours, sometimes even three hour builds. But but these were built from scratch. Like literally I was dragging and dropping blank elements and designing each and everything. People didn't really like it or some people liked it. Some people didn't. It was like a love and hate uh, because it was either so detailed or it was, it was too long. Uh, oops, hold on. I lost the comments. Give me just a moment. Bro, you have to do a full tutorial about pretty links for group members who are affiliate focused. I'd like to expand on it because it sounds like money to my ears. Uh, pretty links, yes, I explained it earlier. We have a way to do it just by doing these external uh, redirects uh, through pages. And that's basically it. There's not much to talk about. I could do a separate video about it, but uh, we will have an extra functionality called pretty links that will make it um, make it cool. Are there any templates in Groove to create a bio link like Linktree for TikTok and Instagram? Uh, yes, we're working with Mark. I'm gonna assume, silly me, that your name is Mark. So yes, Mark, uh, we have added 
just la I believe last week or two weeks ago, we added in, where is my groove pages? We added in, uh, I believe, 10 uh, link tree type templates. The current template library makes you scroll to the bottom to see the newest templates. Unfortunately, that's how it works. With a new template library coming out in a uh, in a week or two, that's not going to be an issue. So here you can see BioLink 1, BioLink 2, BioLink 3, BioLink 4, 7, 8, 9, and then there's 10. So we have 10 different designs for BioLinks. And then the, the latest templates I'm going to do an update about today. There were five JV templates. So Kevin uh, Strite, for example, or I do not know each and every single person here, but I know that some of you guys are running your own affiliate uh, page or affiliate products. So if you want, we created five different JV pages so that you don't have to kind of come up with your own. It's basically a, a sign-up page for your JV uh for your for your product for example to promote your product there are other ones that have the promo tools embedded inside for example this one i was just using this one in my demo so it's a jv page that uh, that says hey affiliates here is a here is an explanation of this affiliate program here you can find your links this is the explanation of what you can get and maybe a breakdown of the funnel like the front end, you can get that much commission, the first upsell, second upsell, third upsell, yada, yada, yada. And then if they want, they can sign up for updates to learn, but to kind of hear uh, when there's a launch or something like that. So we have added five JV pages. There's another template that was added. This is a, uh, this is a full website template. Um, this is for, I believe, a coaching. No, it is for a creative agency. So it's a, I believe, five or six pages template that is for a creative agency. This was added last week as well. I'm going to do an update about that today also. So these are the latest templates that were added in the groove. All right, let's see where we have stopped. Okay, here. For domain name, how can I change it from store.domainname.com to domainname.com forward slash store? Uh, you cannot do stores on uh, on folders. Like you cannot put the domain name.com to be your, your website, for example, and then forward slash store to be your GrooveCard store. Unfortunately, that's not possible at this moment. We have been uh, talking and having calls on how to how to make this happen, and there is a way, but we will need to uh, we will need, I believe, a couple weeks of development with multiple different teams to make that happen. So at this moment, we just have it on the to do list, but it's it's not a main priority right now. For the moment, uh, subdomains are possible or root domains. Folder publishing, like forward slash something, isn't possible yet with a store. It is possible for a blog. So and domain name.com forward slash blog is possible, and I will show you how to do that. Um, so if you go to your domains, right, your your primary app needs to be this this dash below the app needs to be in Groove Pages. If you publish your root domain, so in my in my case, it's grooveassist.com. If your root domain is pointed to Groove Pages, then you'll be able to put the blog onto a folder. Let me show you how. So I will open, I don't have Groove Blogs. I'm going to open it here. All right. I'm opening my blog and in the settings of the blog, I go to domains and here I can publish to a folder domain.com forward slash blog. I select the domain and I select the location. So it's going to be the root domain forward slash blog, or you can do anything like forward slash podcast, forward slash articles, forward slash news, forward slash something, and you click save. All right. And that's basically it. Once you did that, uh, make sure that you go back and republish your blog and it's going to then uh, show up as a folder like forward slash blog 
Okie dokie, let's go on. When will the projects option be incorporated? I don't know what projects is. With self billing len, I clicked on the link generated. I always get an error. It has been like this since beginning of Groove. Any ideas if it's a bug? With self billing, I click on link generated. I always get an error. I don't. I haven't uh, seen that issue on my end, so let's see. Billing.groovesell.com. Let me just clear my emails. Hold on. Be right with you in a moment. I just cleared my emails, as you can see. Um, so if I go to billing.groovesell.com, if you type in your email, and send an email, it says, please check your email for login. There should be an email arriving real soon. Okay, I'm not even logged into my account. I don't know what I was ex expecting. Let me just log in. <laughs> uh, hold on, yeah, expired. Uno momento. Okay, so there should be, okay, it's not yet giving me the option, but I can go into Gmail now. Okay, customer portal access. Please click here to access the billing portal and it immediately logs me in to my purchases on that, um, on that link. So there was no option or there was no issues at this moment on my end, so. It's all good. There is, when I try to download an invoice uh, that was done in 2020, then yeah, it, I cannot do it anymore, but there was no issue with logging in at all. So if you are experiencing it, uh, Eric, make sure that you reach out to our support and report your findings. Can we use .gifs on GrooveCard pages yet? Indestructible trimmer. Uh, not yet, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, we are, similarly to our, uh, our merging of the, of the domain publishing to a folder for a store, like where you have your domain.com forward slash store. Similarly, uh, we will be merging, hopefully soon, the image libraries. At this moment, we have two separate image libraries. One is for GrooveCard and one is for Groove Pages. And currently, they do not communicate and they are not the same. So, in Groove Pages, Groove Member, Groove Blog, Groove Mail, and the other platforms, we can use GIFs. But on GrooveCard, they uh, they do different conversions of the images to WebP, and that currently doesn't allow GIF images. Unfortunately, um, we have been talking about that, and we will need to. We will need to do this uh, this merger of the image libraries. I uh, haven't gotten to that one yet. Is there a timeline to uh, us be able to edit GrooveMember into another language? Not at this moment. I do not have a timeline for that one, unfortunately. David, in GrooveCart, when I add the product photos, the first canvas print at variant different sizes works and variant works fine. In GrooveCart, when I add my products, the first product and the variant works fine. When I add another product, print only to runs the second variant size in line with the first one. Uh, Johnny, I would I would need you to record a video about this and reach out to support. This is pretty hard to understand without a full-on video on when we see what is happening. So please, if you could record a short video, like use loom.com or something like that. These are a free, this is a free tool that gives you five minutes of video um, so that you can, you can provide us this information so we can sort it out for you. In GrooveMember, the instructions are clear how to post courses, but how do you post the pics of ebooks that lead to accessing the ebooks themselves? Um, not sure what you want to achieve 
instructions actually post courses, but how do you post the pics of ebooks that lead to accessing? You want to upload a picture that when clicked downloads the downloads the ebook. If I understand, I would just I would just do it differently. I would just put a put an image and say click here to download, which would be just a a, a text link to uh, to where they can download it. I would not kind of complicate it with clicking on the image and things like that. I don't think even if that's possible in GrooveCart or in GrooveMember currently. Upload an image with the in Canvas uh, editor, as I mentioned it here. Let me just delete this one. So upload an image here to a lesson. Let's just say this will be the, the image. And then below, just write your text. Click here to download. It may look simple and it may look silly, but if it works, then it's not silly. All right, and just click the the, the hyperlink and just say groove.cm. Um, yeah, let's just send them to groove.cm, HTTPS. That's it. So now we have created the link. When they click here, it will it will get downloaded. So once you click save, basically you upload an image of a of a book in here. Let's see if I have one. Not sure if I have one. Anyway, it would be just an image of a book. You upload it. Must be this. One of these is a book. Here we go. For example, this. You upload this image below, click here to download, and you're good to go. All right, let's see, where did we stop? By the way, if you were interested to, to go and watch that book training webinar that we have, it, it already started. So make sure you check out your emails. Uh, there should be a link to join. How do nested containers work inside Groove Pages? Is it possible to position a small container inside a big container, or position an image inside a desired position within a big container? Um, yes, you can do that. So you can containers are elements, just normal elements. So if you can drag in a text element or an image, you can also drag in another container where you can put in some more stuff as well. So that's that works. There's no there's no problem with that. The project functionality where we start a project and choose to add pages members. Oh, the brand project. Uh, yeah, so we are working towards that inside uh, inside Groove Pages. We have set up the new Groove Pages version two is being set up so that it it is an easy transition to that project uh, brand project. There is, it is not actively being worked on, but we are moving towards that. It's a huge task. Every every app will need to uh, develop. So that uh, so that we achieve that brand project layout that we that we planned, we're slowly moving towards that one, but we are not there yet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I I managed to get to the bottom of the comment section. Uh, if I missed some questions, I apologize, but I will be wrapping up now because I think I answered a lot of questions and also because I want to go on that training. I have a, I have a book in my head and I would love to, to know what that uh, lady has to teach me. So I highly encourage you all to just open your email uh, inboxes, click on that, go to webinar link and let's meet over here, over at that webinar on how to write a book. All right. So thank you very much for being here. Hopefully I answered your questions. Hopefully I managed to to help you with the uh, with the things you were struggling with. If you have any other questions in the meantime, feel free to let me know. All right. Thank you very much. See you next week on Wednesday. Same time, same place. Goodbye. Until then, have a great week. Bye bye.